Hello Troublemakers, welcome into First and Last. Before we begin though, I do need to share something quite embarrassing, I gotta show you. About a month ago, I went to Disney World in Orlando, Florida. You're thinking, Dylan, what? you're 32 going to Disney? Oh wait, you're only, you're only 20 going to Disney, it's okay. They have a ride called Tron at Disney World and it's, um, it's like a roller coaster. But you're not sitting, it's like uh, you're on a motorcycle almost. It's such a cool ride. Like if you're at Disney World, you should go on this. Cause it's like the, the theming of the walkways and the entry into the ride is also super awesome. It's like two motorcycles side by side and then like a line of them. Now I'm in a group of three. So the two people I'm on the ride with are behind me and then I get paired up next to somebody I don't know. So the ride starts going a little bit and then it comes to a stop. We hold for a few seconds. And then all of a sudden, we shoot forward. Zero to 60 in like two seconds. And I remember just like nearly passing out. I hit like G-force. I remember my neck, I could feel the blood trying to like pump its way up to my brain to keep me conscious. And I wanted to share the photo that uh, was taken on the Tron ride. Now, you can understand my facial expression because of what I explained. Like the way that they shot you forward, it's not normal. Like this isn't a normal experience you have. However, what I'm saying is a lot more believable if you didn't see the face of the guy right next to me, who's having the time of his life. This man is shouting into the night, just his ultimate glee. And I am almost unconscious. God, what a disaster that, I'm embarrassed. Oh, I took a couple photos. I'm gonna, hey, listen. Listen, it's been, uh, it's been like a year and a half since I posted anything on Instagram. I'm gonna, I'll post some photos. And I'm gonna post this photo, all right? And I, I want you guys, when you see that photo, to go, I understand you, Dylan. I don't want to hear anything about like, hey, Dylan, look at me, I'm in my 30s and I can't handle a roller coaster like a child. The summer I turned pretty. Last week, I, I watched Spider-Man, last Monday, of course. But it took me about like uh, half an hour into the movie to really sink into it because I knew what happened. You know he's gonna get bitten by a spider, you know his uncle's gonna die. That's why today I decided to watch The Summer I Turned Pretty. I don't know anything about this show. I want to go into this as blind as I can possibly get. There are words on the screen. I'm not gonna look at them. And for those who are unfamiliar about how first and last works, we only watch the, the pilots and then we watch usually it's the series finale or season finale for ongoing shows. This is gonna be the season finale of season one. I think a second season just came out. Look at the oh, I'm chock full of information. My family's been going to Susanna's beach house and cousins every summer since I was a baby. <laughs> Wait, wasn't this the backstory of Kissing Booth? There's like a beach house that they go to every summer. Why? Do I gotta watch a bunch of rich kids? Is it a bunch of rich kids? Wait, is this a book? Did I read this book? Are all the characters besides the main character dead? <laughs> or am I thinking of a different book? I might be thinking of a different book. That was a good ass twist in the book I read. You want a hot make out with Conrad uh, Fisher. You've been in love with him since we were 12. Ooh, she's been in love with a guy named Conrad. So she has poor taste already, we know. My mom is weird about money. The fact that Susanna has a lot and we don't. Ooh, you guys are poor. Ha <laughs> suckers. <laughs> when they have money, like, ugh, gross, richy people. And when they don't have money, it's like, ooh, gross poor people. I love it. There's just, there's no way to win. This is the game I like to make people play. Oh, who's here? Who's here? Who's the cashier? Hi. I know the character I hate most now. I, no, that's not your voice. Hi. Uh, Thought I knew every pretty girl and cousins. Hi, what's his name? What's his name? Jumper. Dog, find a bridge. <laughs> I hope his name is Jumper so that joke works. Please be Jumper. Come to the bonfire tonight. The He's jump! He is jumper! I saw it! Every time he makes me cringe, I'm gonna say find a bridge. Oh god, I can't wait. There's gotta be a triangle, right? There's gonna be a triangle of guys. Well, I just wanna see her options, you know what I mean? Cause I, I can't wait to judge. Jumper better not be an option. Hello? <laughs> did he have something on his fingers? Why did he hug her with his fingertips only? That doesn't feel good. To just be fingertipped? I think he's probably one of the options. He's one of the boys of the house, right? He's losing points already. We're gonna start all the boys at a five, and we're gonna deduct and add points based on their actions. The fingertip hug was a minus one. So he's at he's at four. He's behind. Oh, this is this must be Conrad. Oh, he's the emo one. Oh, god damn it. He's the one that she ends up with, right? I like you better with glasses. Okay, fuck you. Minus a point. <laughs> Guys, I hurt my ankle. Come on. She's lying. She's gonna pull you in the pool, dummy. Minus a point for being stupid. You should call your father and tell him we got in safely. He'll be here for the fourth. Wait, he's coming here? Of course. He always comes for the fourth. We've just gotten divorced. I'm excited for this part. Hey, listen. He'll be here for the fourth. Everyone's here probably for the, the triangle. Are they brothers? She's not. She's not. There's not a triangle of brothers. Oh, that doesn't feel good. That feels a little gross. I know it's not like technically incestuous, but like if it's so close. But the family dynamics. Wait, he's coming here? Yeah, that, this, this right here, the look from that woman is interesting. 
because she's like, oh, wait, dad's coming. And then the fact that you cut to her giving that look, there's something there. And I can't wait to, f well, I guess I'm not going to see it. <laughs> All right, I'll meet you outside. Okay? Okay, I'll be right down. So he's like the bubbly, cheery one, right? And then the, the bad boy is the, the dark-haired one. I'm gonna give him a point for being the cheery one. Cause like the bad boys are just, it's, it's the same story all the time. No one knows my pain. Shut up, cheery one has pain too. He's just not, you know, he's, he's hiding it better. Which thank you, all right? Don't let me deal with your problems. Hide it. <laughs> That's what I want from my guys, all right? Just need to drop by the country club first. Oh God, never mind. I'll go by myself. Catering? I swear to God, Beck, you said you were doing a few bottles of wine and that's it. <gasps> they have money. She's insecure about money and she doesn't care about money. This is, we're gonna watch that dynamic unfold. They're gonna get into a big blow up at some point this season. But don't worry, they're gonna find a way back to each other. You don't have to come in the club. You can wait in the car. Fine. You can wait in the car. <laughs> You're a grown woman. You can wait in the car as I take care of my errands. Oh, you're gonna wait in the car, actual! You leave me too long, I'll get sunk in place. She's the one who wanted the divorce in the first place. Oh, dad didn't want the divorce. And he has a beard now. Yeah, he thinks it makes him look cool. Well, does it? Kind of. Hey, can I, I'll say something. This show has like just great energy. <laughs> like, it feels very uh, easy breezy summery. And that's kind of like the, uh, as she set it up at the beginning, this summer house is kind of makes her feel like that. And the show is doing a great job of um, both with like how they're shooting it and then also just like, uh, you know, finding the right location for making it feel as she described. So. Waited all year for this. It is, it is good in that regard. Release. Ooh. Sorry. Really great. Thank you. Publishers didn't send me on tour for this one. It's been a... She's an author. Why am I surrounded by people who have actually published books? First it's Harden, now it's the mob. Release. Ooh. Sorry. Why did he bump? Why did he bump? Cleveland Castillo is off-brand Jonathan Franzen. Cleveland Castillo is such a phony- Oh, that's probably him, right? I bet he wears horn rim glasses. I bet that's him right there. Mm. Oh, why did he bump? Why did he bump before? Oh, you're trash talking him in the open. Yeah, see? <laughs> ah, that's him. Yeah, contacts irritate my eyes. Sorry. Oh, she just brushed that off. She just trash talked him, and then he he made a comment that would just incite more pity, and then left. And she was like, "Oop, whoops, a daisy." I wish I had her personality. Goodness, if I if I try, I have done that before accidentally. Just trash talking someone. Turns out they were right there the whole time. Oh, that's the most embarrassing. I quit. I quit my job like uh, like a week after that, partly because of it. Uh, he quit football. Wait, really? You quit? Mm -hmm. Belly, I almost forgot. I have a surprise for you. An invitation to be a debutante. Oh, that was a great episode of The O.C. Episode four, season one. You have to debut into the rich society. Oh, there was a fight and everything. I loved it. Girl comes of age and is presented to society. I know that because of The O.C. The annual debutante ball. It's Newport's biggest event. So whatever's next week. Don't you want to get all dressed up? It's just not Belly's kind of thing. She's our feral little alley cat. <laughs> I don't think, like, there's nothing wrong with the mom, but she has been buzzkill central for the entirety of this 20 minutes that have gone through this episode so far. Every time a character starts having fun, she's like, we don't need to do that, do we? <laughs> oh yeah, Taylor's dad was reading this guy's book. She's single. It's a smack talk to love story. Mm. You go get love from another author. <laughs> oh. All right, everybody's fond of love, huh? Don't let my mom make you her little doll. I mean, sometimes I wish I was her daughter. You're better off with Laurel, trust me. Mommy issues? Minus a point. Daddy issues? Fine. Mommy issues? Problem. Why? Don't ask me to explain myself. I don't think I know. Minus a point. I just don't. I'm just getting bad vibes from him. I mean, something's going on. Just, just tell me. You're too obvious about your pain, my guy. Minus a point. Can I come too? Uh, no. Oh, she wanted to go hang out with Jumper, huh? At some point, can I, can I make a prediction? She's gonna go hang out with Jumper, but Jumper's gonna be a douchebag, and then one of the, probably the bad boy, is gonna come in and punch somebody and save her from whatever... Jumper put her through. Just a guess. Just a guess. But we always watch it happen one night on the first night. I'm kind of tired, so I think I might skip the movie and go to bed. Is she gonna sneak out? She gonna sneak out to hang out with Jumper. Oh, she's sneaking out. Oh. <laughs> I like this. I like this. I like this moment here. I didn't finish my point. I have to voice over now. As so often happens, I got distracted by the next immediate thing that caught my attention and it diverted it completely. But I did want to highlight this moment because it's such a good coming of age moment. They always do movie night together. However, she feels both pressure and desire to be more adults and to go hang out with kids her age. It's a nice moment where we get to see that thought cross her mind. Oh, that's Jumper. Hey. 
Oh, jumper! Jump off a bridge, dog. If you get cringy, I'm gonna punch you. Get a boyfriend back home. Oh, jump! A bridge! I hate this guy. Also, dog, I think... Okay, I'm gonna change up the joke. This guy's like in his 20s, and she's 16. I want jumper in a jumper. A prison uniform. What are you doing here? And I, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh! <laughs> Conrad go punch his ass. Oh, are you okay? Belly? I thought you hated the Red Sox. Who are you? Who are you? Nicole. Wait, she's angry at him for making out with a girl who likes a team that he doesn't like? <laughs> like of all the reasons to get mad at somebody. <laughs> You came! Great. Why? It's the way he moves. I got a minus a point, my guy. I'm sorry. Like, I don't want to do it, but it's just like, it's three times. It was the first time I saw you. It was down the stairs, and now it's on the beach. He just like, he's got like this giraffe loping going on, you know? Don't you think maybe it's time you talk to him? There's nothing to talk about. Oh, what's the secret? Just like, it's going to be like divorce, separation type stuff. I think she's probably separating from her husband. Or something and Conrad find out about that. That's why he's in the bad mood and quit football. I don't know. There's something there's something there like that. I really think you should let Belly have a dub season. Oh. <laughs> debutante balls are just so problematic. Is the debutante thing at the end of the season? I don't think they'd set it up this early and then have it hanging over the heads for uh, I don't think so. I kinda hope it is though, because I kinda wanna see it, but and if they build up for a whole season, it's gotta be like there's gotta be a lot that happens at the thing. Flowia? Hi, uh, it's me. <laughs> Who are you now? It's uh it's Cam. You can sit down if you want. Oh. Are you new this summer? No, no, I'm from here. Oh, we got a local. We got a local. Meaning he's he's got no chance. But he's still gonna get some screen time. <laughs> I stick pretty close to home when I'm here. How come? I guess because I, I don't really know anybody other than my family. I do. He just gained a point. He was he starts at five? He's at six already. Ah! Uh, Alright, I'm putting him at seven. Cause he's not forcing any of this. This is all very casual. I appreciate this man. He's at seven. This man's the leading he's the leading. He ain't gonna win, but he's leading. Are you cold? I, I, I don't even like this at eight. <laughs> eight! He's at an eight! This man's amazing! Take it up your hands. Thanks. I'll take it up your hands. Hey, she's good too. Listen, her performance, I she's like the heart of this already. This is amazing. My brother is such a dick. The other guys you were with? Is any of them like your boyfriend? Slow down, my guy. You're at seven now. You just lost the point. What's your problem, man? It's one beer. Stop. Stop. No, I'm jump. fine. I'm fine. Wait, Jumper's about to get jumped? And it has nothing to do with the main character? Nice. Oh. Oh. No, you're not going to get in a car with the guy you just met. I'm Cam. Cameron. Your name is Cam Cameron. <laughs> Plus one. Plus one. That's funny. <laughs> that delivery was awesome. I'm Cam. Cameron. Your name is Cam Cameron? It's just Cam. <laughs> I'm gonna give both of them a point. Cam is at nine. Good boy's at four. He's at... Oh, he's in the basement. I, I'm gonna... I'm just gonna put him at his zero right now. The whaling boat that I intern on, it, it leaves at dawn every morning. I was wondering if you... would, uh, wanna come? You wanna see me off on my whaling adventure? Is that what you just asked? Do you wanna see me off before I go whaling? Look at this face! She's like, hmm, I'll think about it, but uh, probably not. This could be my summer wish. The guys are gonna break it up. Which guy? Which brother? Which brother's gonna break it up? Neither of them? Cam? He's in the lead, big time. Oh, what do you want, bad vibe? Your hair's like a little kid's the way it's always. I'm glad I stopped you there. Belly. Have you kids been drinking? How could you guys be so irresponsible? I would say getting picked up by the cops for underage drinking is a pretty big deal. Okay, Miss Buzzkill. Oh my god. I mean, she she's right. Listen, she's right. If I was a parent, I would also be upset. They're not my kids. I, they might be dead. I don't know. The three boys might be dead, and she's just like coping. I don't. I'm not 100 convinced that this isn't that book that I read. So I don't care. Oh, the whaling expedition. So maybe I'll change too. Oh, you're gonna become the wife of a whaler? She's seeing him off on his whaling expedition. <laughs> oh, here we go. Sad boy on the beach, all alone. Here we go. I actually have somewhere that I need to be. Gotta go meet your whaler boyfriend. Wait, where are you going? See you about a whale. Did she said what I thought she said. Wait, where are you going? See you about a whale. See about a whale. I thought she said that. Why do I like that so much? Well, one of my favorite movies of all time, Goodwill Hunting. That's the line they use. I gotta go see about a girl. I love that. To go see about a whale. That was inspired by Goodwill Hunting. Then I'm excited. <laughs> all right, prediction time. Let's make a couple predictions. 
before we hit to the season one finale. My guess. I hope Cam's still in the picture. I don't think he's going to be. He would break formula too much. Like, this is about the brothers. That's where, like, the fan interest would be. So she's gonna have to choose between one of the brothers. I think by the end of season one, she's probably gonna be with the bad boy. That's where it felt like it was leading. I'm also predicting the debutante thing. I think that they're hitting that in like episode two, three, four. How many episodes is this? I wonder. Oh, it's only seven episodes. Oh, it looks like this might be the debutante thing. Yeah, the debutante ball is here. <laughs> Damn, they really built this thing up. This is gonna be eventful. All right, I'm excited. I wanna watch this. <laughs> oh, the parents, the parents. Uh, I think the, the mom, that I didn't like was going to be in a flirtationship with the other author uh, who's gonna have taught her like all the secrets to Instagram booking. But then there's also gonna be a complex relationship between Conrad and the mom and something the mom didn't tell Conrad but Conrad already knew. Hold on to Jeremiah's arm. Jeremiah, who's Jeremiah? And he'd do anything for you, they both would. Yeah, it's the good brother, Jeremiah, okay. I wanna go and I'm, I'm kind of proud to show everybody. Is there like a skill show? portion of this? What are you going to show them? Oh, isn't there a dance? There's a dance. There wasn't the OC. <laughs> I hear there's a white knight available. You can't make your debut without an escort. I hear there's a white knight available. <laughs> you got me the dress I wanted. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, they had a fight about a dress. You just look so uncomfortable in the other one. Oh, the mom. She was against the Debbie Tom Ball. And this is her way of showing support because the daughter likes it. She's going to be supportive. I like that. I know you didn't want me to be a dev. I didn't. It's just hard to let you go. Hmm. That's how you hug. With, with your hands. Not just the tips of your fingers. Jeremiah, get that? I screwed up big time. Oh! I forgot he existed. At poker with Liam, I lost every hand. You know, the money I've been saving up all summer is gone. I can't even pay for my tux now. I'm sorry, I can't go to the ball with you. He's got a gambling addiction? <laughs> you couldn't just get up and leave? You got a problem. No, of course not. Because you want to Liam and the other guys to think you're a baller. I think it's something serious. I, I think it's an addiction. I don't think it's just because he wanted to seem baller. Maybe I'm wrong. For what it's worth, Jared was the right choice. Yeah, I know. Damn. He's in the basement and like, I think he knows it. And I kind of like that he's there because he did something to her. And I don't like that he did it. I don't know what he did, but I'm sure he did. So suffer in that basement. I'll be right by your side the whole night. Oh, I'll be like, <laughs> they're, they're too close. They are way too close. Like I, they're doing the debutante thing together. But they wouldn't be this close unless something happened between them and they're like, like almost an official thing. I think they're together, guys. I will. You'll do what? Yeah, that she's, she's too close. What happened to Cam? But you don't get a say in who I date. I get to pick and I pick Jeremiah. Charlie me gollies. This was not the choice I was expecting. Cool. I'm so glad though. I'm so glad. Conrad is such a douche. I hope he suffered. I hope he gets nobody. I hope he and Jump were getting a huge fight, a huge brawl. Like Conrad gets stabbed at the end of the season. I've had a crush on Conrad for like my whole life. But then you grew up and you realized he's gross as hell and he deserves that basement. It's not your fault Conrad's a fuck boy. But you're kind of a fuck girl too. Yeah, where's Cam? Huh? You gonna mess around with your whaler boyfriend before he comes back from his expedition? Oh. <laughs> oh. Come on, you okay? Yeah, no. It's been way too long since I danced. I am. Um... Oh, she got a medical condition. She dying? We got to die in, mom? Oh my god. I must be out of practice. Ah, you go pass out. That's the cliffhanger of the season. She go pass out on the dance floor. Ah, you know. You don't know. You confused as hell, boy. You know. She got a dying friend. I see you guys found the bar. Hey, Dad. Oh, that is the dad. Okay. Uh, I don't think we've officially met. I'm Cleveland. There was something interesting that was said in the first episode. Uh, the, the dad grew a beard after the mom initiated the divorce. He grew a beard and got a girlfriend. Hey, she must have kind of like been like, hey, don't grow a beard. And then he had a beard when they met the first time, but now he shaved his beard. I don't know if there's symbolism where it's like, you have the beard when you're not with her, and then you, when you're with her, you don't have a beard. There's not even like symbolism. I think that's just her preference, and then guys are like, <laughs> adhering to it. We haven't hung out much this summer. Hey, you've been pretty MIA. I know, and that's on, that's on me. If we all went on an overnight fishing trip. Yeah, I'm in. Yeah? All right. No, nope. you guys can't go on your fishing trip. Your mom's about to pass out. She got a medical condition. Man, you guys are gonna kill this. He's bringing better vibes. He must have worked out whatever he had to get out of his system. You better smell those roses. Last time you're gonna be able to do that for a while. Once you go into your coma. <laughs> but you're gonna have to face that Susanna isn't gonna be here much longer. <laughs> Let me tell you, we watched after a couple weeks ago and it's like, Harden, your real father is from an affair of a... It's like, it's so fanfic -y. It doesn't connect with viewers as much as like the death of a parent does. You know, that's so much more 
potent. So far, they've been tackling it from the angle of friendship, it appears. Because I don't think the kids know. Well? Did he hear? Okay. No, he, he, no, he'd be in shambles. Oh, you did hear? Oh, he's registering it. Hey, can I say something? This show, actually, I, I came in, I, I expected it to be kind of like really cringy, and I'm sure it has those moments, but it does a lot of the subtle things really well. Like shots on certain people, the way that they deliver their lines, a lot of it, it just works. It felt like the showrunner knew exactly what they were doing. Like they, they hit the tone that they wanted to go for, and it felt, it feels consistent. And you might not like the tone, but they do it well. I came in, I was like, hey, I'm in a roast. Also, hey, whoa, 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 what's this man doing over here? Who is this man debuting? Is he debuting as like a 45 year old? You can't do that. I forgot what I was saying. What are you doing over there? You trying to hide him in the shadows? You can't hide that man. What are you, what is he doing here? You are incredible. You guys killed it. I love you in white. Remind me of the dress you wore to prom. <laughs> nice fit. Is this the ex? <laughs> Remind me of the dress you wore to prom. If that man or anyone who has that vibe is the ex to a girl I'm dating, I couldn't be less intimidated. Like you could say anything you wanted about your past relationships. Reminded me of when you and me were together. <laughs> and I'd be like, yeah, I don't give a shit. I would never fear that my girl would leave me for a guy like this. You know what I mean? Like even if they had a history. <laughs> you just got that like dorky, like, huh, I'm gonna go work on Wall Street. No one cares. Go do it. See you later. I don't know. I just, he's got that corny vibe. <laughs> nice fit. I well, couldn't afford it after our last game. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't know it would put you out. How would you know? You want it, you keep it. Oh, no. See, you're doing the opposite thing. Just be confident around him. He's a loser. <laughs> Stop. Like, hey, no offense, but he's a loser. You're getting involved in your feelings for that? It's not worth it, my guy. Oh, my God. I can't believe you're about to fight out your mom. It's gonna die. <laughs> Uh, I don't know about learning the information that way. Maybe you could come with me. My fall is really up in the air. We need to talk about that. There's something I have to tell you. Oh, he got secrets too? Oh my god, everyone's got secrets. <laughs> I hope they all come out. So why didn't you tell me you and Liam were a thing? Why are you being like this? Being like what? All weird and insecure. But I don't exactly fit in here. I, I grew up in the suburbs of Philly, all right? Not even that. Oh, we got classism issues? Feels like it's out of the blue. That nice of a suburb. I drive a Honda Civic. I'm, I'm nothing like him. That's a good thing. <laughs> Have you seen him? You don't want to be like him, my guy. I think I, I love you. <coughs> he, he thinks. He's not sure, though, so. Hey, have you guys seen Jeremiah? <laughs> Where's Jeremiah? <laughs> Where's your phone? Ah, uh, tough news to get, my guy. Okay. I think she's gonna make it though. I don't think she's gonna die. I think she's gonna be fine. Which, uh, I kind of dislike. I like her uh, in the show, but I think for like the story purposes, I want to take that risk, take that leap. The mom's dead all of a sudden. Like, what do, where do we go from here? That's a big leap. And I like to see the show make that leap, but I don't think it's going to. I think it's gonna be a slow thing where it's like, she's fighting cancer and then she eventually beats it. It just doesn't feel like enough. It feels like, a, it feels like I was expecting a uh, haymaker and I got a little jab instead on the arm. And it's like, all right. No, don't step up. No, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't. No. No. Now he's taking advantage of his mom getting cancer. That's what happened. He doesn't know it, but it. He does know it. I think he does know. I think that's why he was surly at the beginning of the, the first episode. He knew for a couple weeks, and that's why he quit football and everything. Oh my god. He's totally using it. Oh, tough day for you. I hate that Conrad is gonna win. Oh. Glad Shut up. Shut up. That it was me. Shut up. Ew. Get out of here. Ginger, so what did you want to tell me before? I know about Susanna's cancer. Conrad told me. He knew. I knew he knew. It's about mom. I found something out. You already know, don't you? Conrad knows? <laughs> no! No! The setup for everything was working so well. I was complimenting the show. I thought it was all gonna gel and mesh. It's all unraveling. It's, a, it's like a house of cards. I thought the mom was gonna die, and then we're gonna have to be left on a cliffhanger, because I know the second season just came out, and I was, it was gonna be like, oh, dealing with the death of the mom. And it was gonna like change the dynamics of things, and they're gonna have to learn to like grieve and move on, and it's gonna be like really deep and emotional, all while they're just like teenagers trying to live their lives and trying to understand the world, you know? And then he had a secret. I was excited to find out what his secret was, that his secret was that he knew her secret. And now Jeremiah is upset because Conrad knew, and they're gonna get into like a little, they're gonna get into a tussle. Watch, watch him tussle. No, this whole fucking time he didn't tell me. Tussle! <laughs> Jenny Han, who wrote this, I know she's seen the OC. 
This is exactly how. This is the Demi Top Ball from episode four of the OC. As you can see, I was fired up. I was I was passionate. I started talking about the OC, and then I I thought, wait, hold on. Let's finish the episode first, and then we'll get into it. Stop it. That's it's, that's so embarrassing. If you're gonna tussle, tussle correct. Tussle in an entertaining way. I'm embarrassed for the show. Oh, I was giving so many compliments too. I feel I feel bad. I overpriced. I gave it too early. We both know. I feel so stupid. Because you were dancing with Conrad. Why do you feel stupid? She was dancing with Conrad. Susanna was sick and I didn't even know. See, moments like this are really nice. All right, you're 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 winning me back a little bit, Joe, all right? That Tevi top ball was such a huge fail. I can't believe you failed so hard. But this, this, this is good. The mother-daughter, hey, listen, I'm, you know what? We do so many, like, romance stories and I, they're, they're entertaining, but, like, mother-daughter stories, father-son stories, even friendship stories, they're so, they're, like, they're, they're too rare. This is so refreshing. She's not gonna get better, is she? Uh, I, I, no. I think she will. Mom, you're gonna do the trial, right? No, honey. Mom, but you could try. She's gonna try and she's gonna win. I mean, can't you just try? I told them I'd do the trial. Boo! I couldn't say no. <laughs> Sorry. It's just, it would be so much more impactful if she just actually died. It would just make for more compelling entertainment. These people aren't real. It's going to work. I, it will. We know this. Oh, here we go again. Belly, I'm sorry for being so shitty all summer. Don't apologize. That's just who you are. There's so many things I want to say to you. Don't. Keep them, keep them inside. I don't, just need somebody. Don't say I need you. Don't say it. I need you. Oh, oh you said it. I don't want you to need me. <laughs> I want you to want me. No! Oh! I do want you. Oh no! I hate this guy. No, you just kissed the other guy yesterday, you sexuous. Oh. Where's Cam? I wish this shot had a fucking whaling boat just like coming off the horizon and he's like, Belly! I'm back! I, I caught a whale! Or whatever whalers do. Wanna see my whale, Belly? Why are you kissing him? I brought a whale for you! Oh, okay. Alright, it's time. Let's talk about it. The reason I drew so many parallels to uh, the OC is because it follows a similar beat structure as the OC does. And what I mean by that is, in episode 4 of the OC, the debut, Ryan is officially adopted into the Cohen family, so he, uh, he has to be a debutante at the debutante ball in order to debut into their rich little society. The girl he likes likes as a boyfriend. Except, uh oh, the boyfriend gets jealous and he's nowhere to be found. And everyone needs an escort. Everybody has to be paired with somebody. And that's where the, uh, I hear there's a white knight available. Uh, that, that line, that comes into play here. Ryan is offering to escort her in place of her absent boyfriend slash partner. Then we have the drama tussle. This happened in the summer I turned pretty. It happens here in the OC. See, Marissa's father, he's a financial advisor and he advises a bunch of people in this rich community. However, he's been losing a lot of money. And in order to stay afloat, he's been in embezzling the funds of his clients. And they build this up over the episode, like early on in the episode, Marissa's dad is buying something and his credit card declines in front of his clients. I'm sorry, but uh, your credit card's been declined. Um. But then the client is like, hey, Marissa's dad, I am getting a little bit worried here. And Marissa's dad is like, I was gonna wait to tell you this later, but uh, I don't really have your money. Now this, for some reason, makes the, the client upset. So that guy punches Marissa's dad in the face. And then someone else rushes over, he gets punched in the face, and then there's a tackle, there's gasps, there's shouting, and the guy's like, hey, he's a thief, he's a thief. We get a reaction shot on Melinda Clark, she's awesome. Like, this is a devastating thing. This is a big deal. Now, if you're comparing that to the summer I turned pretty, this... But this is embarrassing. The similarities are certainly there. Her escort was nowhere to be found. In steps the other person, the white knight. There's a similar level of buildup, like the secret. People are kind of finding out more and more. But the, just like the fight, the fight is so lame. This is so bad. Like, because it's like 10 seconds, but like no one in the crowd is reacting. Why would you not edit in some crowd noise? <sighs> And that's my issue with this, is if, if this is your climactic event for your season, like, this is the big fight. The secrets are out there. The secrets are revealed to everybody. Then let the scene be a little bit more chaotic. Like, can the fight, can they, like, tackle each other over a table or something? Can we make this a little bit more dynamic? It doesn't have to be, like, crazy. It doesn't need to be a knockout brawl or anything. But you could give us a little, right? One punch, they hug on the floor, and then it's over. I just wanted a little bit more. And while we're here talking about the OC, this guy, this guy right here, 
coming clean about like, oh, I drive an average car. Shut up, dog. I, he pissed me off. The OC, if you want to talk about classism, that's a guy who comes from like a rough and tumble, dangerous neighborhood. He comes from an abusive household. His mom abandons him. His brother is in prison and he almost got sent to prison himself because what his brother pressured him into doing, which is stealing a car. So now bring that kid into rich society. There's going to be serious classism. This guy who comes from just like an average household, and he's like, oh, I, my car has 85,000 miles on it, so I don't think I fit in here. Like, it's such a hollow problem. This, that's not real classism. If you're gonna go classism, then show it to me good. I don't fit in here. Yes, you do. Shut up. Granted, I made the joke with the editing, like, I did miss five episodes. So maybe they really built up. Maybe there's some, like, serious stuff in here. But I don't, I, don't, I just don't want to hear people from, like, the middle class being like, oh, no, I struggled so much. I'll never fit into your rich person society because I went to a public high school. You and I just, we live in different worlds. We can never understand each other. All in all, I, like I said, I did enjoy the episode more than I thought I was going to. It stayed grounded a lot more than I thought it would, considering it was a, a, a love triangle between a girl and two brothers and a whaler. I forgot about him for a second, but it did stay grounded, and I, I do want to still give the show props because it, I think it does like a lot of the friendship stuff. Even in the first episode, the friendship between the, the two moms, the relationship between mom and daughter, I feel like that probably got touched on a lot in the uh, the first season, and it looked like that they did it well. Overall, for me, it was an enjoyable show. I, I would imagine people liked it because they made a second season. By the way, don't give me spoilers because I, I don't know if I'll make a, a first and last for the second season, or if I just wait for a couple years for the show to finish and then do first and last for the entire series. I don't know. I'll just on that later but yeah don't spoil anything thank you for watching this video love you guys and i'll see you in the next one toodles